Hello and welcome to the Warpix Academy. My name is Ulif and I will be introducing you to some of the elements of the Star Trek Online user interface. The first thing I'd like to bring your attention to is at the bottom left of the screen. This is the chat box. If you've ever played an MMO before, you should be fairly familiar with the way a chat box functions. Essentially, this is where you communicate with other players as well as get general information such as combat statistics. Using the chat box is fairly straightforward. There's a selection of channels in which you can speak, which you can click by using this drop-down menu. You type the message you want to send, and you press enter. The chat box comes configured with three default tabs. Chat, which shows communication from other players. NPC, which shows random NPC chatter that you see as you're walking along the ground. Or also bridge officer notifications that you receive as pop-ups and the combat tab which shows you all your combat statistics. This is where you can find information such as damage taken, damage received, damage healed, etc. As you can see I've added some additional tabs to my chat bar and that's fairly easy to do. All you do is right click on the tab bar which brings up the chat configuration window. Here you can add a new tab, give it a name, and select which channels you'd like to show up in your chat bar. When you're done just close the window. To the right of that we have the ship throttle and ship status indicator. The throttle is fairly straightforward. It shows you how fast your ship is going. At any time you can enter what's called full impulse by clicking the double arrow at the top of the bar. This puts your ship in its maximum speed. It's important to note, however, that when you enter full impulse, all your power systems drain down to five except for the engines. This is because all power is being diverted to the engines you can't actually fight while in full impulse. It's only useful for getting from encounter to encounter. To exit full impulse, just click the full impulse button again. While your ship is moving, there's also an all stop button that appears at the bottom. You can press that at any time and your ship will come to a complete stop. When your ship is stopped, the all stop button turns into a reverse button, which allows your ship to fly backwards at approximately one quarter impulse speed. Just click it again to stop flying in reverse. To the right of that is your ship's power levels. It comes with four presets. A preset for attack, which diverts power to weapons. A preset for defense, which diverts power to shields. A preset for speed, which diverts power to engines. And a preset for balance, which tries to equalize power distribution through all four settings. If you wish, you can change the view into one that shows a bar graph. Some players find this to be a little more immersive. Additionally, if you switch to view 3, you can actually tweak your power levels and save them into the presets. Want your attack to have a little bit extra power into auxiliary because you're flying a science vessel? Here's where you do it. Drag the sliders the way you want, lock each slider when you've got it in the position you wish, and press save, and it will save it to whatever preset is currently selected. To the right of that is your weapon tray. As you can see, I have weapons highlighted in green on my weapon tray. That means they're set for what's called auto-fire. Auto-fire is a great feature in Star Trek Online, which allows your weapons to continue firing without actually having to press any buttons. To set a weapon for auto-fire, simply right-click it. It will receive a green outline. That indicates the weapon has gone into auto-fire. Then, all you do is select a target and press your fire button once. The weapon will continue to fire until your target is dead, if you wish to remove a weapon from auto-fire, just right-click it again. The green outline goes away and it's no longer set for auto-fire. In addition, you can hover your mouse over a weapon in the tray at any time to see the statistics for that specific weapon and a visual representation of the weapon's firing arc. To the right of the weapon tray is the toolbar. This is where all your skills and abilities, which we'll call powers from now on, are placed. The toolbar by default is split into two pieces the toolbar itself, and the bridge officer toolbar. The toolbar starts with one row. As you can see, I have it expanded to two rows. You can do that by clicking the Pages button here and selecting the number two view. The toolbar can also expand to three rows. However, when you do that, your weapon tray and your bridge officer bar both go away, and instead you're left with only a three-row toolbar. I personally prefer having the two row because it helps organize my bridge officer powers according to type and officer. You can add and remove powers from your trays at any time by clicking this icon right here or pressing P to open up your powers menu. Simply drag an ability into the toolbar anywhere you wish it to be. To remove an ability, simply right click and drag it out. 
Make sure that when you're trying to edit your toolbar, the lock tray indicator isn't checked. Otherwise, you won't be able to change around, add, or remove any powers in your toolbar. To the top right of the screen, you'll notice the radar and the mission tracker. The mission tracker is useful because it shows you all the missions you currently have in your journal. To open your journal, just press J. This shows you all the missions you currently have in a much more detailed format. What's nice about the mission tracker is you can select any mission and set it to primary by selecting the mission in the journal and clicking the Make Primary button. This is useful because it takes the mission, highlights it in yellow, and puts it to the very top of the mission tracker. That way it's always very easy to find to know what you need to do next. If you don't wish to have a mission primary, you can just click the Clear Primary button and it will go away. Also in the journal is where you access the difficulty settings. Star Trek Online has a system in which you can increase the difficulty of the game in return for increased rewards. It comes with three settings, Normal, Advanced, and Elite, which are similar to what you would normally see as Easy, Medium, and Hard. Normal difficulty is just that, it's Easy Mode. Uh, it's very easy to defeat enemies, and it's what a casual player is probably looking for in their gameplay. Advanced difficulty has harder enemies, and also introduces a mechanic called the Death Penalty in which when you die, occasionally you will receive what's called an injury. Uh, it's a temporary 30-minute debuff to either your ship or your captain, depending on what you were when you died, and it re slightly reduces your stats. Elite difficulty has the best lose chances out of all of them. However, it comes with a even steeper death penalty. You will receive an injury every time you die, and the injuries can get quite severe. To the very top right of the screen, as previously mentioned, is the radar. The radar is useful for a number of reasons. One, it shows enemy ships in relation to your own position. In addition to that, it has the Depart System button and the Hail Starfleet button. Hailing Starfleet is especially useful because it means you don't have to return to space stock to continually update, complete, and acquire new missions. Instead, you can remotely speak with all your mission givers. This means you can continue flying without having to constantly drop what you're doing and return to space dock. To the right of the radar is a selection of buttons. The two of which that are most important are the Help and Support button, which brings up the GM Help menu, where you can request help or report a bug, and also the drop-down menu, which brings up additional options. This includes access to the PvP queues, your character's mail, the fleet status window if you've joined a fleet, a way to visit your bridge, and the way to open the sea store. The ground interface for Star Trek Online is very similar to the space interface. It has the same chat box, a similar toolbar, and it has the same radar and mission tracker. The notable difference are, instead of the ship status indicator, you have a health and shield bar located at the top left of your screen, and the toolbar is slightly changed. The toolbar, instead of having bridge officer powers, is only going to have your own character powers. Again, the toolbar can be expanded out to up to three rows. To add and remove powers, works the same. Click the pad icon or press P to open up the powers menu. You'll only see your ground powers here, just like in space you only see your space powers. Ground powers include items that are equipped, such as triples, as you can see in my list. Your health and shield bar as the name indicates, show your health and shield status. The blue bar is your shield status, and the green bar is your health. What's interesting to note about the health bar is it's got a menu attached to it. Right-click it, and you actually have a button called Change Uniform. When you join a fleet, your character gains access to a second uniform slot that you can use. Many fleets have uniforms they'd like to see their members in for role-playing reasons. By visiting a tailor and defining your second uniform, you can then use the on-the-fly uniform option to change your uniform. It's great because you don't have to keep returning to the tailor to change your look. In addition, every character has access to what's called an off-duty uniform. This is a separate selection of clothing, different from the Starfleet uniforms, which you can use to give your character a little bit more of a casual appearance. I believe that's covered everything. If you have any questions or you think there's something we've missed, feel free to drop by our forums at warpigsmmo.com and leave a message. We'll be happy to help you out. Thanks for watching.